Attack and release are two options that you're going to see a lot in music production, but what do they do and how do you use them? Well, in this GarageBand Quick Jam, I'm going to let you know. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and this is Studio Live Today, where I help you create, record and release your best music. Now, if you've been using GarageBand or really any other digital audio workstation, you've probably come across attack and release in your instruments or your effects. So what do they do and how do we use them? Well, in this video, I'm going to explain it using the power of the synth instruments here in GarageBand. So let's dive in and take a look. We're in a new project here in GarageBand. I'm going to tap the more sounds under keyboard and under synth classics, I'm going to go down to the plucky synth, which is one of my favorite synth sounds. It sounds like this. Now, what we need to do first is tap on the arpeggiator in the top right here and turn it off. It's a very cool option. And I've got a video about how to use it if you want to learn about it, but we don't want it for this one. So now, We've got our synth sound ready to go. Now, if we tap in the top right here on our settings dial, we're gonna bring up the different settings. Now, every different synth instrument will have different settings. This one has a cutoff here, which will change our sound and a mix dial, which mix in how much of the bell sound we get. But then we have these two, we have attack and release. So these are the ones that we want to focus on in this video. So let's show you how we use these now. Firstly, attack, as the name suggests, tells the instrument or effect or whatever we're using how quickly we want something to happen. So in the case of an instrument, it is how quickly the sound will initiate after we tap the key. So let's demonstrate it now. With the attack down very low or very fast attack, as soon as I hit the key, we get that sound. Let's turn the attack up all the way now and do the same. You can hear that it doesn't reach maximum volume for quite a while. It's actually build, building in a delay between when we actually trigger the sound and when the sound is played. If we put this somewhere in the middle, again, we get a medium level sort of attack sound. And right back to the start, we'll get that really quick attack sound. So let's jump over to release now. Not surprisingly, release does the opposite. This is how quickly the sound will be released after we lift our fingers. So for starters, let's put the release very low and take a listen. So you can hear there that as soon as I'm releasing my finger, the sound releases as well. And think about attack is hitting. So think of attack as hitting, release as removing or taking away, releasing the sound. So if we turn the release up all the way now, even though I'm tapping and I'm taking, my fingers aren't on the keyboards now, it gives us that sustained sound because the sound is not releasing for a long time. If we put that somewhere in the middle again, it's got a little bit of aftertouch, but not a whole heap. So that is the basics of attack and release as we use it here in a synth instrument. And you're probably already ahead of me, but if you think of this in terms of your effects and your plugins and your other things, if we come into plugins and EQ, things like our compressor, the GarageBand compressor only has attack, it doesn't have release, but other compressors have release as well. And the exact same principle here applies. So instead of it being, the sound of our instrument, it's actually when the compressor will kick in. So with a very fast attack, it means that as soon as that volume goes up above the threshold that you set here, the compressor will kick in. If you have a very slow attack, so we have 100 milliseconds, means it's going to take a long time. So the volume has to be at a high level for a long period of time before it will kick in because that attack is set high or slow. So think of attack and release in terms of fast and slow, and that that is what, how we define how quickly something happens when it's first initiated and how slowly or quickly it is actually released or that it finishes when it's actually done. So if your compressor had a release knob like we do with this synth instrument, then it would take a longer time to actually stop compressing. Whereas if we want it to stop compressing immediately after the sound goes down, a quick release or a low setting there will do the trick. So there you go. Next time you see attack or release on one of your instruments or effects, you'll know exactly what they're doing. If you want to catch some more videos, there's two linked right down below. You can subscribe to the channel by clicking or tapping in the top right, and I'll see you on the next video.